Jay Rogers came to the manufacturing demonstration facility about nine months ago and immediately made the connection of the ability to use this technology to print a car. When he first pitched the idea, I thought he was crazy. It's cool to make cars. But when a lot of people who know of 3D printing look at this, they think, why would you ever want to 3D print a car? Historically, manufacturing has been a linear process from design, make, and deliver a product to your customer. So with computing and online technologies, manufacturing is becoming nonlinear. So the next generation of manufacturing is about atomically precise manufacturing, using less to produce more, and on-site, on-demand, at a given location. The digital space, the digital enterprise, is what is going to be exploited to meet sustainable manufacturing goals of the future. At the Association for Manufacturing Technology, one of our responsibilities is to make our membership aware of what are the needs in the industry, what currently is being funded at university and research lab levels, and then who is starting to accept some of the advancements in technology and what industries are valuing from it. You've heard it more than once. Do you want to change the world? Maybe we need to change it by using less of it, more wisely, more efficiently. Not change the world, but change how we do things. Additive manufacturing changes how we make things. It's gotten very big and very fast. The dirty little secret about additive manufacturing is that it, it's really intended for small things. The big area additive manufacturing is turning that all upside down. So instead of going at one cubic inch an hour, we're going at about 500 cubic inches an hour. Well, any machine that allows you an inexpensive try at something that's actually a finished product is a good thing for a product designer or a mechanical engineer or a company that's trying to make something. And yes, this process does that in spades. The thing that I, I, I really attribute to Jay is he put the gauntlet out there. We have a target. In terms of manufacturing, it's the moonshot. This process of broad area additive manufacturing is additive and subtractive at the same time because it unlocks the ability to be able to design complex things and be able to push them out will force a lot of these devices in a lot of industries to rethink the way they're made. In 2007, Local Motors introduced the Rally Fighter, an internal combustion car designed and engineered by an online community of enthusiasts and assembled in part by the customer. Local Motors' electric car has evolved the same way, as an open source community co-creation project. The design contest began in April and ended in mid-May with over 200 submissions. In June, judges chose the Strati, designed by Michele Anoue as the winning entry. What kind of team would it take to realize the design? The team that was willing to take risks. Cincinnati, Oak Ridge, MDF specifically within Oak Ridge, and Local Motors have been a three-group team that have taken huge risks to be able to meet this timeline. The enabling technology behind the BAM is the carbon fiber reinforced material. So that carbon fiber is a game changer. It enables us not just to make materials that are extremely strong and stiff, but also to, to grow them in a room temperature environment. If you can build a vehicle, you can build anything. This is an opportunity to be able to make things faster, better, more efficiently, and more sustainably. The digital enterprise means that now no longer do I have an inventory of physical parts, I have an inventory of digital parts. When I get a sale, I, instead of making it locally, packing it up, putting it on a truck, shipping it, all I gotta do is hit send, and I send that file. We are at a point in our history in manufacturing that is going to be important. There's going to be an important shift, and it's much like in the late 80s with the personal computer. There are so many areas that will be unlocked by a process like this, the sky's the limit. There tends to be two umbrellas that I see to bring United States manufacturing back to the forefront as a leader worldwide. One is in collaboration and one is in interoperability. Collaboration is the opportunity for who traditionally are competitors to work together at the pre-competitive stage. And then there's the umbrella of interoperability. This is devices talking to devices, machines to machines, systems to systems. 
the challenges that manufacturers have are the same challenges that they've had for 100 years. How do I design and make a product? How do I get it into the hands of my customer as quickly as possible? How to do this with high quality and make the best use of resources along the way? Time, people, and money. The thing that is new is that we have massive computing power that we can bring to bear to tackle these challenges. What we'll see is a manufacturing shop floor that has people on it that are carrying tablet computers around, running an entire factory, running an entire supply chain, having digital access to all of the data about the factory. At the Digital Manufacturing and Design Innovation Institute, our approach is to use online technologies to let designers and makers collaborate in real time to exchange data about design and manufacturing and to make prototyping and the design process much faster. Launched in early 2014, the Institute has funding of over $320 million from the Department of Defense, Industry, University, and Community Partners. Companies are already using data like never before. They're doing uh, modeling and simulation in the design phase of new product development. Over the next 10 years, companies will use data across their entire enterprise and across the entire life cycle of manufactured products. And they'll use this data to accelerate new products to the market. Who is the world's best manufacturer? Mother Nature. Mother Nature have built everything around us for millions of years, sometime improving, iterating, improving again, and adapting. So I like to look at the manufacturing as highly bio-inspired. We have only certain number of metals, ceramics, and other basic building blocks on the Mother Earth. How can I give better product by using same amount of material, in fact, less amount of material, so I can cater to the populations sustainably? Nanomex coating and lubrication products are designed and created at the nano level. But A.J. Maushi is quick to point out. We are not a nanoparticle company. We are a nano engineering company. So using the principles of nano engineering, we build the next generation of cutting tools, lubricants, surfaces, functional surfaces. Lubricants engineered by Nanomech have doubled or tripled the lives of moving parts in race cars, farm machinery, and more and EnGuard antimicrobial and fire retardant protective coatings are, in essence, digital materials applied to conventional materials. Nanomech has an opportunity to change the landscape of sustainability, mainly because of how they view sustainability. They view it as a stewardship model inside, as a mantra for the company, not just a technology fad. At Nanomech, we looked at, for example, sea urchin. Sea urchin is an animal in the ocean, scraping the stones and taking the food. But in the process, sea urchin tooth never get blunt. We have created a composite of super hard material and a relatively softer material. So our cutting tool, when they machine, they remain self-sharpened. But the productivity can be as high as 300, 500% more. Away from Nanomech, A.J. Maushi is a professor of materials, manufacturing, and integrated systems, and knows that his students are the future of manufacturing. I involve students, those are risk takers. They are ready to work on the problem that they had never been trained before, but they are ready to learn those new topics. The future of manufacturing can be summed up in, in one simple word, it's STEM. For the past four years, the uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory has been a big sponsor of the first robotics competition. We have on the order of 13 schools that come into our facility every, every year for six weeks. Students get extremely excited about manufacturing when they get around 3D printers. At the high school level, they're not encumbered by reality. They don't know what they, they can't make yet. So they start to really push the envelope and do things that are extremely creative. The Manufacturing Demonstration Facility at ORNL has become a model for attracting high school students to careers in advanced manufacturing technology. Get these students excited, give them the skills they need, and then open the door and let them, let them run it. They're our future.
Whoever said we're going to become a service-oriented society, it's crazy. We have to have manufacturing in our country to be viable and, and to be a, a world leader. The challenges that we face to technically make this possible from a design, engineering, and process perspective are large. And when they are all solved, the whole world will look at this and say, oh my God, that's so obvious. Why didn't we think of that? The United States is a nation of innovators and tinkerers and app developers. And we have this American innovative spirit that lets uh, innovations rise up from individuals and entrepreneurs. And digital and online technologies completely enables that. Made in America need to be cool, made to be absolutely good quality, but at the same time to be competitive priced with smart manufacturing. But Made in America is an incredible brand. We just need to build it better and better.